Okay, so I'm joined this afternoon by Dr. Sharon Cox, um, who is going to be speaking at the Global Forum on Nicotine and joining us in Warsaw. Um, Dr. Cox brings over 10 years experience in the drug and alcohol field, including uh, working in frontline services with some of the UK's most deprived communities. Currently, Dr. Cox is a trial manager at London's South Bank University Centre for Addictive Behaviours Research, um, where she's looking at alcohol and smoking consumption among disadvantaged groups. Um, so Sharon, you're gonna be talking about um, smoking and homelessness. Uh, there is a will, but is there a way? Can you tell us a little bit more about your presentation, please? Uh, thank you, Ruth. It's a pleasure to speak to you this afternoon. So, um, I'm going to be talking about the issue of smoking amongst adults experiencing homelessness. Um, but I won't just be talking about smoking. Um, what I'm going to start by talking about is um, the issues that we have around homelessness um, and then really highlighting perhaps through exploring the issues associated with homelessness, especially the negative issues associated with, with homelessness, why this is a group that has become particularly overlooked in the research field. And I want to present to the audience why it's become overlooked from both a health professional's point of view, but also why it's also overlooked um, in, a, in, in terms of research. So there's very little research focused on adults experiencing homelessness. So I'll introduce what we know lots of what we don't know mm -hmm. and then start to talk about what harm reduction could look like for this group and how perhaps we could be doing things better and actually where things are already happening um, and yeah. where there are new opportunities for harm reduction. Excellent well it's sounding very interesting um, so your work is obviously engaging with um, the use of harm reduction practices among people from the most deprived communities, homeless, but also other areas of deprivation in the UK. Um, yeah. What would you see as the main challenges for disadvantaged groups uh, who want to benefit from tobacco harm reduction? Well, there are many of them. Um, I think that one of the things I will be highlighting in my presentation is a recent systematic review that myself and colleagues have conducted on smoking and homelessness. And we, when we started that review, we set three really broad terms. They were just smoking, tobacco and homelessness. Right. And there's not actually much out there. Um, one of the key things that we have actually found from that literature review um, is that there's a real desire to quit amongst adults experiencing homelessness. But the barriers that they face are not actually from within the group themselves. The barriers are often from the um, situation that they find themselves in, whether that's because, um, you know, they're not in an environment which is conducive to kind of these types of health needs. Yeah. And let's be clear, smoking is often, when you've got multiple other issues, smoking is often seen at um, as really insignificant compared yeah. to things yeah. like housing, drug use, um, uh, poor, poor mental or physical health. Sure. So so there's their their real challenge is how do we get people to understand that actually smoking is something that is incredibly mm -hmm. dangerous for people and all people. It, smoking doesn't become less dangerous because you've got more problems. So yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's a real challenge is changing the mindsets of professionals that are supporting these adults. And that's really come out in the review that many of the barriers are uh, placed on people who are in this group and not necessarily created by themselves. Yeah, so sure. Perceptions, changing perceptions. On top of that, of course, we do know that e-cigarettes are not universally accepted um, as a mm. tobacco harm reduction um, and, um, initiative. So one of the things we also have, we have this kind of double-edged sword, if you like. We have yeah. we need to change perceptions that this is a group worth investigating and and helping, and we also have to help um, people to understand that um, e-cigarettes are really are a, hold much potential for people who may sure. want to um, quit tobacco, but not necessarily want to quit nicotine. Yeah, sure, that's that's really interesting. Um, I I'm interested to know what. Uh, sort of what 
intersections you found between your current work in tobacco harm reduction um, among disadvantaged groups, including homeless people, um, mm. and your previous experience in the drug and alcohol field? And mm. do you find that everything is, um, I mean, you've talked there about the, the sort of compound problems, I suppose, mm. and the layering of problems. Mm. Um, but do you see uh, intersections in terms of attitude and, and, and sort of difficulty of, I guess, unpicking those difficulties that people may have? Yeah, I think so. So, um, I mean, let's be clear, homeless adults are not an exclusive group. They are also people who, who find in substance use services, but not that you find in substance use services. Um, they are people who um, present with a high prevalence of poor mental and physical health. Um, but actually, some of them don't as well. And you find yeah. this in drug and alcohol services. There's no such thing as, um, you know, um, a typical service user or a typical yeah. peer in this situation. Um, but what we do tend to get is this, you know, this brush stroke approach to um, smoking cessation for these groups. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I understand why that is the case, but often um, smoking cessation is, needs to be much more tailored to people's current needs. Yeah. Um, and um, and I think the opportunities for tobacco harm reduction really need to be much more widespread. So yeah. for the groups that I see, I think we cannot really continue to just place opportunities for smoking cessation within your... Um, formal clinical health environment and actually some of the work that we're doing now at London South Bank University with colleagues um, from other universities in the UK is, is we're, we're offering e-cigarettes or, or standard care at a homeless support centre that people are already accessing yeah. because we see a real potential in that we know that the the groups that myself and um um Two other colleagues, Debbie Robson and Sarah Pratt, are also talking about um, in that session. They're not well represented in stop smoking services. Mm -hmm. So how how can we engage people? We see and I'll be presenting some survey data at GFN that the, the groups that we see saying, actually, we do want to quit smoking. We do want to save money. We do want to improve our health. Yeah. Um, but what's currently being offered is not working for me. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And I think that um, to answer your question, I think that we see people from lots of different disadvantaged groups saying exactly the same thing. That, yeah, we do want to quit smoking, but actually what I'm currently doing isn't, isn't working. Isn't and enough. e-cigarettes, you know, they're no magic bullet. No. But they do currently, they are something at the moment which is offering something different. Yes. And, and it's everyone is different so everyone is going to need something different absolutely and they deserve to be explored yeah yeah um do you think that tobacco harm reduction can learn anything from drug harm reduction and alcohol harm reduction yes <laughs> but often the things that seem unorthodox the things that seem counterintuitive and brave um are the most pragmatic client-centered approaches absolutely. Yeah. Mm. and that it, it, abstinence isn't for everybody mm. and neither should it be and mm. we should be and, and one of the things about the drug services that I've worked in people have their own outcomes you know if you have a real and and it's not like this in drug services now which is why I don't work in drug services anymore um but when people can set their own outcomes they feel motivated they can they will change yeah when we set people's goals it's not owned it, it's it's not their own but it can sometimes be meaningless mm. um but you potentially set people up to fail with our, with arbitrary goals so the sorts of outcomes that we want from people also we need we need to as a research community get much more accepting as a, yeah. as a health community too over what is a tobacco harm reduction health outcome what sure. what what does that look like and there's going to be a spectrum of those going to be a spectrum yeah, yeah. There, there is going to be a spectrum mm -hmm. but what we don't want are goals that make people think there's no point trying yes um and then finally my last question would be to say what are your hopes for uh the global forum on nicotine what are you looking to get out of it who are you hoping to meet who are you hoping to hear yes. 
so this is my fourth year at GFN. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and, and I always really look forward to GFN. I always come away feeling inspired and feeling like I, I've learned an awful lot. Um, it's, it's a, it, it really is a good um, a learning experience. Um, one of the so I always really look forward to seeing uh, Professor Neil Benevitz. Mm -hmm. I think he's very pragmatic. He's very evidence based um, and he he's often a voice of reason as well amongst a lot of noise. Yeah. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing Neil Benevitz. I'm also really looking forward to seeing um, Dr. Uh, Marce Gonovitz. Um, he's not presented at GFN for, for a couple of years, so it's a real welcome return. Um, and just generally, you know, there is always a good crowd. What I really like about um, the Global Forum of Nic Nicotine is the way that there's a real mix of academics and people from the health profession, but also many, many peers who also, you know, together, it's it, there's always lots of wise words and some, some, some cross ones too <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's all right we can hold all of those that's great yeah. I think it's um you know that's that's the, one of the reasons why GFN exists isn't it is to be a space for for those exchanges I think mm, which is absolutely. important yeah okay thank you very much I'm really looking forward to meeting you in Warsaw um rather than over a Skype screen um so Thank you very much for sharing your um, sharing your highlights and your the things you're looking forward to. It's, Thank that's, you. We're looking forward to it. So don't forget, you can book your place by visiting gfn.net.co. Get on and book your place today. Thank you.